Hello and welcome to DFS Coach Talk. Today is Friday, December the 24th. It is Christmas Eve, and I am here with Mr. Josh Crash Davis to go over a five-game huge NBA Christmas Day slate for tomorrow. And I am, by the way, Joe Saravati, affectionately known as Coach. Crash, how are you doing on this Christmas Eve? Are you ready for Santa's appearance this evening? I am. We're ready for Christmas, even though it doesn't feel like Christmas down here. It's about 70 degrees, but um, definitely ready for Christmas. Yeah, it's, I mean, the West Coast, I guess, is having a little bit of problems weather-wise, but everywhere else, it is definitely warmer than normal, so I love it. It makes it a lot easier to get around and yeah. travel and, and do what you need to do. So, exciting stuff, and you know, I know I said Santa comes tonight, but he's been coming to the Coach Talk family here the last couple of days with some early Christmas presents. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we're really excited uh, the last two days. We've had a lot of winners in football, too. So you guys have done fantastic in the NFL stuff. But NBA, two nights in a row with top 1% lineups across the board on DraftKings, FanDuel, and Yahoo. So we've had a really... Good couple of days. We're on fire, and, and we're expecting to carry that into the Christmas slate tomorrow. Uh, you know, we said all along we were excited. I know it's crazy with all this COVID stuff and the mm -hmm. signings of these guys that haven't played in years and all these names from three to five years in the past. But it all benefits what we're doing here at Coach Talk. It falls right in our lap because we're hand-building lineups. We're utilizing – all the tools in the background, including analytics, uh, projections of usage and uh, ownership and total DFS points. We're using optimizers. We're using everything at our disposal. However, when push comes to shove, we're taking that information and we're building it into one or two lineups that we feel is what the DF our DFS community wants and what really uh, the DFS entire landscape needs because mm. the majority of, of people out there are either just throwing a lineup into these 150 max lineups, Josh, or they're, uh, you know, following some good advice from people and in, in providers. But those folks are generally building 150 max lineups, which is a completely different strategy than what right. we're doing. And I'm not sure. I I know you've got money falling out of your pockets, but can I don't know if you can 150 max and enter no. every contest every night, right? No way, no way. Yeah. So, you know, and that being said, you know, we're we're just excited to to have you give us a try. We've got uh today, Christmas Eve and Christmas Day tomorrow, all the way until midnight, where we're still offering that 12 days of Christmas. You get 12 full days, all access, coach talk. For 12 bucks and we've had a ton of people take advantage of that offer and it really does give you an opportunity uh to try us out and no no reason not to catch us when we're absolutely mm -hmm. on fire so very excited about that uh josh and uh, uh really excited for this whole christmas holiday i'm actually in pennsylvania with family uh visiting so that's always great get mm -hmm. to see uh, my mother and and uh, brother and some cousins and and that's always great. How about you? What what are your great Christmas plans this year? We are going to be laying low. We had our big Christmas family get together a couple of weeks ago because my brother uh, brother in law and sister went out of town, so they're going to be gone until after the New Year. So we celebrated early, and so we're just going to be kind of laying low, watching. I'll be watching some basketball and watching the Packers game. So. Nice, nice. Yeah, it's it's good. I love the sports on Christmas Day with the five game or two, and that's what we're going to be approaching today. So, uh, if you want to sign up, by the way, we'll just get this out of the way. So, we'll just roll through the five games. DFS Coach Talk, uh, com is our email if you have any questions. Our website is DFS Coach Talk. If you want to uh, catch us on Twitter, we're at DFS Coach Talk. So, if you search DFS Coach Talk, wherever you're looking, you're going to find us. Uh, on YouTube, if you're watching right now, quick thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button. And also give us a little comment, quick question. 
even just to say Merry Christmas. That combination of three things helps us to move up the algorithm on YouTube. Also, while you're doing that, if you haven't already, hit that little bell button up in the upper corner. That will give you uh, uh, an alarm button that will sound to you and say, hey, uh, Coach Talk just posted a new podcast or it's premiering and you can jump in. Uh, where We try to get into most of those premieres and ask questions and uh, take everything from there. So we'd love to have you. Baby Yoda's made a Christmas appearance. I saw that. <laughs> and uh, just excited to give you some more winners. So keep us, uh, keep us in mind through these holidays. And uh, obviously there's no games today. So, you know, we're going to all be enjoying some family on Christmas Eve. And then you can check this pod out uh, for the Christmas Day games tomorrow. And it's an early start. 12 uh, noon on the East Coast. So mm -hmm. for you, Josh, right now it's 11 a.m. So, you know, don't get caught last minute. I would recommend uh, definitely getting in the contest you want today so you don't yeah. get shut out. Get those plugged in and then listen to the podcast here, which you're doing now, I guess. And mm -hmm. then tomorrow uh, at 1135 Eastern in the morning, uh, Josh and I will post uh, all of our lineups. And again, we do a coach's clipboard on DraftKings for those that may have not are not familiar with us. It's a five game core highlighted group. And then we give you several options of other players to fill in your roster. We'll give you a full FanDuel and Yahoo cash and GPP lineup as well. So mm -hmm. we're going to give you all the tools you need to win uh, and uh, hopefully all of the, the lineups as well. So definitely catch us uh, 11.35 in Discord. And again, to become a member, it's DFS Coach Talk. Uh, just come and join us. We'll, uh, we'd love to have you. All right. We've got one other thing to do, Josh, and I don't want to forget to do it. I just hit the randomizer. We have, uh, we have a drawing for a $50 PayPal uh, that we'll send out right after the podcast. I hit the... Uh, the uh, randomizer for our current members and there's a lot of them and we thank you so much for being a member we cannot tell you how much we appreciate uh, your confidence in in our product and the winner of the 50 dollars paypal is kenneth phillips and in discord he goes by ken jr so mm -hmm. ken it's an early santa christmas for you check out paypal that'll be coming your direction for 50 bucks right after the podcast. And also, you know, check out Twitter and uh, also here in YouTube for other announcements for winners. Our man, uh, Omaha Joe Stant, will be uh, sending out some three day pass uh, winners as well. All right, man, I'm doing all the talking. So we need a lot of good input from you today, Josh. Uh, let's dive into game number one. And remember, I'll do the game set here, and it's going to take a while because the <laughs> list of guys out are hilarious. But right. I love it, man. It's I'm telling you, it is a massive advantage for us here at DFS Coach Talk. All yeah. right. First game, buddy. It's the Atlanta Hawks and the New York Knicks. It's at noon, and it's uh, the Knicks minus five and a half. The total on this game is 211 and a half. Um, we've got um, coming into this game, Atlanta is 15 and 16. The Knicks are 14 and 18. So mm -hmm. as far as the designations, we have three important questionable tags for Atlanta, which is going to affect this game a lot. And that's DeLon Wright, Kevin Herter, and Cam Reddish. So we need that information. And then guys that are out already, Capella, Cooper, Gallinari, Hunter, TLC, Williams, and Mr. Trey Young. For the Knicks, not quite as bad of a situation. Um, they've got probable tags on Knox and McBride and Quickly, so mm -hmm. that should give them some depth again. Uh, R.J. Barrett remains questionable. He was a late scratch yesterday. And then the two guys that are out are Noel and rogues so nicks on christmas day pretty cool against the hawks mm -hmm. uh, makes for a cool game here 
statistically, before I throw it over to you, uh, Josh, we have pace-wise, uh, not very impressive here. Atlanta 19th and the Knicks 27th. However, we've got uh, poor defense uh, that should help us get uh, some points in there. And that's Atlanta 24th. The Knicks 20th, which is really shocking that their mm -hmm. defense, they were a top five all last year. And the last thing I'll mention is, so everybody's checking this out, the 211 and a half is the lowest total of the five games. Uh, they're all fairly close, but the one game uh, of Brooklyn and the Lakers is 224. So that's the, the highest, the range is everything in between that. So give us your input on this game, Mr. Crash. So the first place that I want to look at is obviously Kemba. You know, he's just been on a tear since kind of getting out of the doghouse a little bit from Thibodeau. Um, 6,600 on FanDuel, 6,100 on DraftKings. He scored 70 in his last draft, in his last game, DraftKings. Unbelievable. Um, yeah. And 41 and 43 before that. So He's really been on a tear. You know, he kind of has a history at, at the Garden. I could see him just having a special day on Christmas Day especially. So um, definitely want to have Kemba in lineups. Um, and then and then um, just to the right of him with Alec Burks, you know, he's 5,600 on FanDuel, 7,400 on DraftKings, so he's a little bit pricey over there. Yeah. Um, but Atlanta's allowed the, the fifth most fantasy points to point guards and tenth most to shooting guards. So we've been attacking their guards all year. And I don't see any reason not to, you know, in this matchup. And then if he plays after he tweet, you know, tweaked his ankle last night, we'll have to see if he's going to play or not. But Cam Reddish is going to be in play for me. 5,300 on FanDuel, 5,400 on DraftKings. And that's about it for me in this game. I just really like the guards, you know, hopefully Cam, Cam will play. Um, but Kemba and Burks for sure, especially on FanDuel. Yeah, and I'll tell you, what a performance by Kemba mm -hmm. last night. 46 real points. Uh, you know, we didn't roster him, but yeah. we still had a top 1% lineup. So it would have been even better if we had him in there. But um, amazing. Uh, you know, I'm really happy for him, though. I mean, they had mm -hmm. ridden him off. They were trying to move him. And then all this COVID stuff happened. And here we go. Mm -hmm. There there he is getting it done. So yeah, good to see a, a, a veteran. And he's, he seems like a genuinely great you know, really great guy. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm so glad to see him having su su some uh, success. Yeah. Um, you know, Atlanta, we need the news. So it's going to be important to be in touch uh, with us tomorrow because tomorrow morning uh, we'll be all over this. Josh and I will be blanketing uh, in Discord, checking out all the player news and getting all of that information. And, you know, I this is the one piece of advice I want to give too right off the, the bat here going on the first game. If you're tied up with family stuff and you're not going to be able to follow it very much, I would just sit it out, to be yeah. honest with you, because it's just too volatile right now. You need the news and you need to stay in touch throughout the day because mm -hmm. big guys can be ruled out and it's so competitive. You get you take one zero and you might as well shut your you know phone off because you're right. done. So, you know, if you can keep an eye on it, let's go for it. We're on fire. We're going to keep it going. But if you can't, it's just better to sit it out and wait until the next one. Just so everybody knows, on Sunday, we have a really solid eight-game slate uh, that I'll be covering that looks really good. So, uh, you know, I love this slate. There's an awesome contest. Christmas is NBA, so I hope you can get in it. But, you know, beware of the scenario whether you can, you, you know, take advantage of any late swaps and all the important things that are there. Uh, once we get the Atlanta news, you know, we can make some decisions here. What I will say, though, if Cam Reddish does play at 5-4, I think he's way too cheap. He's pretty much their first option with all these mm -hmm. guys out. And yep. the dude can score. Uh, I've always been a big Cam Reddish guy. I'm glad he's getting this opportunity. And I think that, uh, you know, even when everybody's back, he's going to be a very important part of this team going forward. So if Cam plays with no restriction at 5-4, I think he's an easy play. I also like John Collins at 7-8. Um, mm -hmm. He's in a really good position here, uh, you know, for a solid game. He's having to step it up as well. Um, Okongu had a nice game uh, yesterday at 3-3. He's a consideration if you're going to buy down, 
but, you know, those are really the only key guys until we get the rest of that news. I'm with you on the Knicks as far as Kemba. I mean, he is up to 6-1 on DraftKings, so it's not an automatic for me. And, mm -hmm. you know, yes, he can get assists and, and occasional rebounds, but most part he is generally uh, a big, you know, dependent on scoring. But he's yeah. handling the ball with a lot of these guys out, even over Alec Burke. So – Kemba at 6-1, you got to consider him. I don't think he's automatic like most people will uh, plug him in. You got to remember this, too. You get a lot of Christmas Day people buying into these tournaments that don't normally play DFS on a consistent mm -hmm. basis. So mm -hmm. they're going to be going with the news of the day. They're going to see Kemba drops almost 50. They're going to you know, be looking at him, and he's probably going to be over-owned. So yeah. as of today... Josh, and it could be, you know, I did it yesterday, so I can make mistakes with it as well, but I'm probably not leaning his direction mm -hmm. because you know there's going to be regression here. Right, uh, right. However, you know, at 6-1, you got to have him a little bit somewhere. I'll probably have him in my GPP. Mm -hmm. yeah. And after that, you know, Julius Randle's not been the same player. He's 10-2. No. He was fine, but I his ceiling has been limited this year. The guy I wanted to ask you about, though, is with, you know, since Noel's been out, Mitchell Robinson's decided to play mm -hmm. some basketball, and he's only 4'8". Does he show up on your board at all? Yeah, 4'8", that's that's a solid value. Um, I could I could see him making some, some GPP lineups for sure. Yeah, he's such a stocks guy, too, you know? I mean, he's going to mm -hmm. get some, some blocks. There's no doubt yeah. about it. Yeah. So uh, definitely a guy I'm looking at on a, a five-game slate. I think he's playable at that number. Will he be uh, matched up with Okongwu? Is that who's going to be his yeah. matchup? Yeah. Yes. When Okongwu's in, he'll be matched up with him. Or if Gorgie Jang comes in there, you know, he'll be matched up there. Mm -hmm. Collins and Randall will be the two guys that square off at the power forward spot. Right, right. So, you know, and uh, Jang's – reasonable defender a kong who's still a little young mm -hmm. a little undersized compared to mitch so yeah. you know just a consideration i mean you don't want to start out your christmas day with mitchell robinson and he has one of his 14 point fantasy days right so there is risk there but mm -hmm. there's also reward so yeah you know, weigh it out yeah always good to take risk on a slate like that with you know five games and everyone's going to be playing the same guys a lot so You've got to find differentiators yeah. that make sense. There's no question about it. Right. All right. Game two um, is at 2.30 p.m. Eastern. It's the Boston Celtics and the Milwaukee Bucks. Um, Milwaukee is favored by three. It's a 219 total, which, believe it or not, 219 is the second highest total mm -hmm. uh, on this slate. Boston comes in at 16 and 16. Milwaukee, a vastly improved 21 and 13. Uh, as far as Boston goes, we've got a bunch of probable players that are coming out of COVID protocol that are going to be available. It's uh, Hauser, Hernan Gomez, Horford, Parker, and Grant Williams. Those guys are all probable to play. Just have to get the final uh, clearing uh, with the COVID protocol. Uh, COVID protocol stuff. The guys that are out are uh, Ennis Freedom, Josh Richardson, and Broderick Thomas. Hmm. So uh, some of their guns back, their major guns are already still playing. Now, the big news, and hopefully you can give us some inside skinny here, two extremely important pieces of Milwaukee are questionable, one being Giannis and one being Bobby Portis. So those pieces of news are going to be important. Then we also get a, a questionable tag on DiVincenzo, who's mm. been threatening to come back. And then Sandro Mabu, he is questionable. Uh, and then the only guy that's out for sure is Brooke Lopez. So we could have two pretty solid squads here uh, without question. Let me give you the, the stats line on these two, and then you can divvy this one up being our Bucks specialist. Um, as far as pace of play, you've got Boston at 21, Milwaukee at 10. 
Uh, both defenses pretty solid, though, 11th and 9th. But it's a close spread at three, decent total of 219. How do you see this one playing out, Josh? Um, you know, I like – I actually like um, some of the Boston guys quite a bit in this game. I like wow. Jason Tatum. You know, he's expensive. He's 9,500 on FanDuel. He's even more expensive at 10-4 on DraftKings. But the last time they played, he had uh, 42 real points, 62 DraftKings points for one of his best games of the year. Yeah. And I'm thinking that Giannis is going to be out tomorrow. So okay. I think Tatum's going to have another big game for Boston. I do. Okay. No, that's solid. Anybody yeah. else from Boston on your radar? Yeah, Jalen Brown, um, 7,800 on FanDuel. He's 9,400 on DraftKings, so I probably wouldn't play him there. But Milwaukee's had problems defending the three all year, and I just think that Brown's going to have some good looks and, and probably knock him down. He's been pretty hot lately, so I do like Jalen Brown here. I'm I'm about to fall off my seat, man. If I see your FanDuel lineup with Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum in it against your Bucks, <laughs> I mean, what is – did you fall and hit your head on the ice or something? No, no. I still like a few Bucks in this game. I like Drew Holiday, of course. You know, he's yeah. been averaging about 50 DraftKings points lately um, with Giannis out of the lineup. And I think yeah. that Giannis is going to be out, like I said. So – at 9,500 on FanDuel, 9,300 on DraftKings. He's not a great value, um, but he does have a pretty decent ceiling. And then the guy I'm really looking at is DeMarcus Cousins. You know, I wasn't really that excited about him when Milwaukee signed him, but he's been a very solid, you know, fill in, um, especially with Portis out of the lineup. Um, he's only 4,900 on DraftKings. He scored 42, 33, and 41 DraftKings points in his last three games. Yeah. So I've, I've really been impressed with him, and uh, it's a nice value play for sure. What a great signing for the Bucks, even mm -hmm. when they have full squad back for depth, you know? Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah, with yeah. Lopez out, it's just a really nice signing. Yes. Well, I mean, for me, I, I can give a, a, some information here, but I need that you know, need the, the final word on who's in and out because mm -hmm. those are some key guys for Milwaukee without question. Um, I, you know, I'm with you on the Jason Tatum side of things. I think he is a great play uh, at 10, four is, is a little expensive on DraftKings, but uh, I really like him. And then, you know, it might be one of those scenarios where I go with Tatum in, on DraftKings, but then flip the switch and go the other direction with Jalen Brown at that cheap 7,800 price on FanDuel. So mm -hmm. I do think both guys should have a, a solid game. I'm not going to put all my eggs in both baskets there, but I'm with you. I, I do like those guys, and I haven't been on them very much lately, but I just like the, the matchup if the guys from Milwaukee that are expected out uh, are out. Yeah. Uh, after that, uh, Robert Williams had a good game last time, you know, and at 5'8". Uh, if he's going to be trying to be guarded by Cousins a good portion of the time, mm -hmm. I think that puts him in play as well. So, you know, even going to Celtics here, a uh, Tatum Williams or Brown Williams and being able to make it a little affordable, I think is a good play. Not, I don't believe you have to go to any bench players because the main guys are in for Boston. Right. On Milwaukee, uh, you know, I'm with you on Cousins. If, if Giannis and Portis sit, I mean, Cousins is a no-brainer, and mm -hmm. Mamu is questionable. So yeah. if all three of those guys sit, then Cousins is 100% you know, plug-and-play, free square at 4-9. Now, if all three of those guys are in, let's look at the opposite side. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to use Cousins yeah. at all. He'll go from 100 to zero. So that's all news uh, related there for sure because, you know, obviously if Portis is in or and or Giannis, they're going to have mm -hmm. everything inside. And even if Mamu is the only one that's in, he's going to split time still with Cousins because, right. yeah, they're getting awesome stuff out of Cousins, but he had been off the shelf for a long time, and this will be his fourth game in the last week. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he's no young guy, and he's he still has a lot of injuries that he's recovering from. So yeah. I need a clean Cousins with nobody else and the bigs playing uh, to make him uh, a plug-and-play. Um, other than that, I don't think I'm going to go the holiday angle this game, although mm -hmm. he's been awesome for me. It's just he against Smart. You know, you still got enough scoring with the Bucks, uh, with Navarra shooting the ball a lot, Middleton. Um, 
So I'm not as high on uh, Holiday uh, and or Middleton here in this game. But if I'm going to have big exposure to Boston, if I do go two guys in this game, I wouldn't mind coming back with, depending on who's in and out, a Nawara and Cousins, or if I really want to buy up uh, a Middleton and Cousins, unless mm-hmm. one of the bigs is back. So I like this game. I think it's uh, a, a good game for ownership, and I think uh, exposure here is important. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Keep listening, by the way. We've got three games left. At the end of this uh, breakdown of the five games, Josh and I are going to build a two brains are better than one FanDuel GPP full lineup for Christmas Day. So stay tuned here uh, as we go. Um, All right, third game. It's a 5 p.m. Eastern game. It's the Golden State Warriors and the Phoenix Suns. This is going to be a heck of a game. Mm -hmm. Two top teams in the West squaring off really the feature game of the day, if you ask me. Phoenix is favored by five and a half, which is a lot considering how good Golden State has been. Um, it's a 217 and a half total. Uh, so that, you know, that is interesting. As far as questionable tag for Golden State, it's Igadala. The guys that have already been uh, ruled out are uh, Lee, Poole, Thompson, Wiggins, and Weissman. Phoenix, who's been extremely fortunate during this COVID time, they only have Nader questionable with Kaminsky and Sarge out. So they have been at full strength the whole entire way, which is really impressive. Here's the dilemma we're in, though, Josh, and I'm interested to see how much you're going to utilize this game. Great pace, two of the top nine teams in the league in pace, Golden State uh, being ninth, Phoenix being fourth. But you've got the top two teams, one and two, mm-hmm. in the entire league in defensive efficiency with Golden State one and Phoenix two. Does that defensive prowess make you want to fade this game, or are you still going to go with it with some of these studs? Um, I'm probably not going to fade this game necessarily, uh, but you know, Curry Phoenix has done a really good job against him this year. Um, he's had 38 and 23 DraftKings points in their two games, their last two games. So he's not my favorite play on this slate, obviously. Um, Chris Paul has had some success against the Warriors. You know, in the, in the game on November 30th in Phoenix, he had uh, 50 DraftKings points. So he had a really nice game there, just over 8K on DraftKings. So that's a, that's a decent price for him. And then um, your guy, Gary, Gary Payton the second. you know, he's 4,300 on DraftKings. He's had a couple nice games against um, Phoenix already this year. So I do like him. And then DeAndre Ayton at 8,100. You know, he had 47, uh, 47.8 DraftKings points against them last time they played in Phoenix with 24 points and 11 rebounds. Yeah. The Warriors have allowed, as we've mentioned many times, the least amount of fantasy points to centers. But so far, Ayton's been able to get the better of that matchup. So that's about it for me in this game. Um, just a couple plays and maybe a value play. Yeah, and you know, I'll tell you, I it's funny, but it, it, this is a, such an important point too. And if if you're new to listening to Coach Talk, maybe you know the holidays, you have some extra time, and you're joining in. You know, I I was really on my soapbox in Discord with our members yesterday, and I, I'll explain it now because it comes into play here. Mm-hmm. It's so important to play the be- best plays that you come up with in the way that you're building and not be affected by all the other noise around you. Like there were a lot of people yesterday saying we need exposure to that last game. You know, we want to have late night sweat exposure. Well, Mm -hmm. why is that? Just because the time the game is played, you know, you have to eliminate all of those things in your mind. It doesn't matter when the games play, you play your best plays. And we came up with that 1% lineup last night and had zero exposure to that late Lakers game. But, you know, we didn't force a guy. I mean, Mm -hmm. you could have forced a guy there just to have exposure, and what's the point of that? So my point being here, and the reason I brought it up now, is I love this Golden State-Phoenix game as far as an NBA fan. I'm going to watch it. This is my favorite game of the five to watch as an NBA fan. But I am more than likely not going to play one single guy from this game. 
Mm. And my reasoning is this. I think that you've got two accomplished defenses, number one. Secondly, you've got two teams without a ton of COVID issues. So there's not crazy guys having all this usage out, you know, out of this world. They're still running their, their offenses and sharing the ball as needed. So mm -hmm. to go up to a Curry at 11-2 against a great right. defensive sure. team like Phoenix or to, you know, try to go with, with guys just to force, a, you know, someone in because this is the key game to watch or whatever, I just don't think it's it makes sense. So I don't want to pay up for Paul or Booker or Curry or even Draymond at that 7-3 number or eight and at the 8-1 number. Those numbers are just too high for me. And then when you look at the cheaper guys, there's so many other great plays in these other games because of COVID mainly mm -hmm. that I don't know you have to force a Peyton or Porter or Bridges or even Crowder or Cam Johnson. Now, you know, Peyton does interest me at 4-3 as a last guy in. I think Cam Johnson at 5K has really been improved in getting a bigger role. But again, I'm not going to force things here. And my point being is, you know, do your system, follow us, follow what we're doing as well. And whatever guys are the best guys are the best guys, regardless of when they play. It's a national TV game. Mm -hmm. It's a, you know, primetime game. Whatever the case is, you have to eliminate that from your brain as you're building these lineups, which you've obviously done. Uh, with the Celtics being uh, some of your key plays today. Yeah. Yeah, that that that's just um, – when I've watched Boston and Milwaukee, those are the two guys that stood out to me the most were Tatum and Brown. So that's what I'm relying on. I love it. All right, we have two games left, and it'll be 14 straight hours basically of NBA action tomorrow. It does not get much better than that. That's – the the – Gift that keeps giving from Santa for all of us. Mm -hmm. All right, the 8 o'clock game, it's the Brooklyn Nets and the Los Angeles Lakers. Uh, <laughs> Lakers are favored by one, and here's your top total of the day. It's a 224 number, which is really a solid number on this slate in particular. Brooklyn's 21-9. and nine. Lakers are 16-17. and 17. So as far as the list here, you might want to go get a sandwich and a, a cup of coffee uh, and come back later because listen to this list for Brooklyn. Okay, here are all the guys coming out of COVID protocol that are probable for tomorrow, but we don't have confirmation there. We did uh, get some three... news, though, Coach. I, I do want to let you know. There was news that Nick Claxton and James Harden will play tomorrow. Okay, excellent. Okay, good. So those guys are in for sure. As far as the other uh, probable guys, Aldridge, Bembry, Brown, KD, Joe Johnson, and Sharp, questionable Blake Griffin. The only guys that are out for sure are Duke, Edwards, Harris, Irving, and Thomas. So lots of moving parts there, but it's looking more and more like we may have you know, Harden and Durant in with these studs uh, tomorrow. So that that's really good news. Uh, as far as um, the Lakers go, we've got probable coming out of protocol stuff on Bradley, Monk, and Reeves. So that's good news. The guys that are still out for the Lakers are Ariza, Bazemore, Davis, and Nunn. <clears throat> so definitely uh, – Big shift there with this uh, protocols being lifted on in this game in particular. Uh, as far as pace, fantastic. Sixth and seventh. So you're, you know, top two of the top seven pace teams in the entire league, just like the last game. But like the last game, two good defenses, not uh, as good as obviously one and two like Golden mm -hmm. State Phoenix. But Brooklyn's all the way up to fifth and the Lakers are eighth. Two teams that in the last three, three and a half weeks have really played much better defense. And, you know, that is a little bit of a concern, but you do have the highest number on the board here. So how much of this game is in play for you? And are you going to go for the big bucks on Harden, Durant, Westbrook, or, or LeBron? So I feel a little bit like Adam Schefter here. I've been looking at my phone. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Steve Nash said that if 
Kevin Durant test out of COVID. He'll meet with the team in L.A. for their game on Monday versus the Clippers. So it sounds like he will not be playing. Oh, okay. That's yeah. a huge change of events. So that's good. And Bembry is in. So Okay. Excellent. Yep. So we did get some news even during the middle of this podcast. That's pretty cool. I love it. I love it. Um, yeah. So, and here's another, here's another one of those plays. that's going to make you think I fell off the wrong side of the bed this morning. Yeah. LeBron James is my favorite play on the slate. LeBron James. <laughs> You're the biggest James fan. I know that's for yeah. sure. <laughs> <laughs> definitely not, but he, um, you know, he's, he's been killing it with 80 out of the lineup, you know, yeah. he's been eight on DraftKings, 10, nine on FanDuel. Um, scored 60 uh, DraftKings points in two of his last three games. In wow. his career, he's averaged 50 DraftKings points per game on Christmas Day in 15 games. I did find that out. So um, strong play here, obviously. And uh, on the other side, if Durant's going to be out, we have to look at Harden. Um, you know, the Lakers have allowed the fourth most fantasy points to point guards and third most to shooting guards. So those two will definitely be my top two plays in this game. And then as a little bit of a value play, I do like Blake Griffin at 5,600 on DraftKings. He is questionable, though, so we got to keep an eye on him. Mm-hmm. I had Durant, but he's out, so I'm not going to have to talk about him. Gotcha. All right, for me, I mean, it's it, James Harden's right now my top play on the board. Um, with Durant being – uh, knocked out more than likely. We'll get 100% confirmation on that for you for tomorrow. But I just 10 7 for James Harden in this game on Christmas without KD. I mean, you know, I don't care what that price is, bring it on. So mm -hmm. I feel great about that play. I, you know, I think LeBron James or Russell Westbrook are good plays. Uh, LeBron, though, has really stepped it up, as you said, uh, really taken on the challenge. And I, you know, he, I think would be, it'd be wonderful to have Harden and James in this game yeah. as two buy-ups. I mean, you can feel really good about it. You know, again, it's a one point spread and it's the highest total. So it's, there's a lot of things that really uh, push to that. So mm -hmm. that's where I'm leaning. I don't think Westbrook's a terrible play though. If you want to fade James and go to him to be uh, a bit contrarian there. I do think there are other good plays here, though, Josh. I think Patty Mills at 7'2 is a, is a fairly priced guy that takes on a lot of responsibility, and he grabs some of that usage for sure when, when Durant's out. Mm -hmm. um, also, if LaMarcus Aldridge is in, I really like him uh, over Griffin Claxton and Millsap, any of the other bigs, and he's rested. And when LaMarcus is rested, uh, you know he is a dangerous player because he's going to get your rebounds and points. Yeah. So I want to keep an eye on him. And then on the Lakers side, you know, the question is, you know, are they going to play big, play small? You know, they do have Dwight Howard and DeAndre Jordan available. Is that going to be a split? You know, is one of them worth playing? You know, possibly. This isn't the, the greatest group of centers uh, that we've seen. Mm -hmm. uh, so there is potential to buy down there. Uh, also Horton Tucker is always worth at least a mention at five, four more GPP ish though. Cause he is extremely inconsistent, but I will have, you know, a couple of key components in this game, uh, but we do need, you know, to solidify some of this final news. Yep. Yeah. yeah. All right, man. Last game at 10 30 at night. So we get the full group of games. We have some team. I think it's the Dallas Mavericks disguised as like Theo Pinson and uh, Carly <laughs> Jones, George King. Um, you know, it sounds like a, a band from the 80s, basically. But, yes, it is the Dallas Mavericks against the Utah Jazz. Uh, Utah favored by 12. So we have by far mm -hmm. the biggest spread and the biggest possible blowout. Yeah, the total's only 215 as well. So that is a concern. And it's in Utah, elevation, uh, definitely a little bit afraid of a blowout. Do you think blowout potential is here? Yeah, I definitely think the blowout potential is here. And that's why I'm looking at some value plays. Um, Sterling Brown, 3,900 on DraftKings. You know, he's been playing pretty well since he's been entered into this, ins inserted into the starting lineup for Dallas. Um, Utah has been about average against shooting guards this year. They rank 16th. So at 3,900, I think that's a good value play. 
And then um, on the other side for the Jazz, I think that that Hassan Whiteside at only 3,700, if this game blows out, he could be a, a nice value play. Um, we like to attack, you know, Dallas with bigs. So, you know, that would be a blowout play for me. And then if it doesn't blow out, if it stays close, then Rudy Gobert, um, 9,200 on both sides. And uh, just a little concerned about the blowout, but that would be about it for me in this game. Yeah, I'm, I'm really worried about it. I mean, Dallas comes in at 15 and 16, and again, they just are decimated with COVID and injuries and everything else. Utah is a solid 22 and 9, and you wouldn't even know that COVID was around with these guys. It's amazing. I mean, you go back to the very beginning of COVID with Gobert touching all the microphones, and look at this, uh, you know, year and a half later or whatever it is, and you've got uh, – the Jazz just like untouched by this thing. It's it's incredible. Mm. But as far as injuries go, Porzingis questionable. I didn't think he'd play last night. A lot of people had to shift off of him because he was going to be highly owned. Right. Who knows if he's going to play? Paper mache Porzingis is what I call him now. But uh, if he's in, he's in. And he's a, a fine play if he's in because they don't have anybody for usage there. Um, and then Bullock, questionable. Cauley Stein, questionable also. The guys that are out are basically, uh, you know, the best group. Burke, Doncic, Green, Hardaway, Kleba, McLaughlin, and Omer, Omer, Omer Rui. I can't say his name. He mm -hmm. had surgery, the two-way player. He'll be out for the year. For Utah, Fitz is questionable, and Azubuki's Ozub out. That's it. Mm -hmm. It's incredible. So that doesn't help matters. The other thing that's a concern in this game, other than blowout, is Dallas is back to the slowest team. They moved yeah. to 29th for one day. They're back to 30th again. So hmm. slowest team in the league. Certainly don't want to increase possessions when you have a healthy Utah team and a, a you know G League and lower uh, Dallas team. And then you know they're going to slow possessions down, try to you know shorten the game. Uh, to give themselves a better chance. That's another reason this game scares me. Utah's only 14th at pace, middle of the pack. Uh, defensively, these teams are good. Uh, Dallas is up to 12th. They are playing better defense because they're playing slower, a little more controlled. Utah's sixth. So not a game that I'm going to focus on at all based on, uh, you know, all those that criteria that I just mentioned. I will say this, though. If... I, if I have the build that allows me to do so, Rudy Gobert would be my center. I think he's the best center on the slate. He is 9-2, which doesn't help. However, uh, you know, Dallas interior is in complete shambles. And, you know, if he plays three quarters of the game, you know, he could have 17, 18 rebounds, you know, without even giving a hard effort. Mm -hmm. So, Gobert is the would be the one guy from Utah that I would go to, not considering anybody else. On the Dallas side, you know, Jalen Brunson at 7'6, that he's still mid-level price and getting more usage than anybody on the team. If Porzingis is out, I feel sort of forced to play Jalen Brunson at 7'6. Mm -hmm. Um uh, Sterling Brown at 3'9 is a great deal. He's been a, a key component. But beware, though, because Kid likes to play everybody. He'll play Pinson and Chris and Nitalakina, Moses Brown, Carly Jones, George King. You may even have a Boban sighting. Uh, I mean, they just, they're going to go, he stated it in the press, that they're going to go very deep because, uh, you know, they, they have to just count on everybody to chip in. And they did a decent job of it in this last game, but the, the talent just was too much. So, not crazy about Dallas other than Brunson. Probably only Gobert for me on the Utah side. Yep. All right, Chief. Let's build this two brains are better than one lineup, and then we can let everybody go upon their Christmas Day fun. Mm-hmm. Okay, I've got FanDuel called up. And I'll start us off just because I just want James Harden and I don't want to have to think about it very long. Point guard or shooting guard? I'm going to take him at point. Okay. If we need to shift it, we can. Since I'm the money spender on the team here. <laughs> uh, 
Are you going to play? But I'm going to take I'm going to take Cam Reddish at small forward. Oh, that's a good pick. That's a good pick. Now, tune in on you know check us out on Twitter. We'll be posting it there and uh, in Discord because if Reddish is ruled out because he does have that tweaked ankle, you know then we'll have to make uh, a change. So keep that in mind as well. So we're playing him at small forward. Um, after all that speech about Gobert, it's hard not to take him, but I hate to put us in that kind of hole. So I'm going to think about that for a few more minutes because he's 6K mm-hmm. on uh, FanDuel. Um, just trying to find somebody fairly priced that doesn't blow it up for us. And again, a lot of the news is going to break, and that's going to change uh, a lot of these builds. So we have to keep uh, an eye on that. All right. How about if we go with uh, – I'm going to just make an obvious pick here of a guy that I think ha- is is a, a smart play. and I'm It's power forward Robert Williams at 5,600. Okay. All right. Let's see what else we got. Okay. What do you think? I'm going to take Gary Payton at 47. Gary Payton at point? Shooting guard. Shooting. Okay. Shooting guard Payton. Let's check that out. And we have small forward reddish. I have to put back in there. I'm going to go point guard Jalen Brunson. Okay. I think that price is fair. So 6,700 a man for our last three spots. I'm going to take... Our last four spots. I'm sorry. I'm going to take the guy we talked about at the beginning. I'm going to take Mitch Robinson. Mitchell Robinson. Okay. You blocked my Rudy Gobert pick right there, but that's okay. I can accept that. How about John Collins at power? Okay. That gives us 6,300 each. Shooting guard, small forward. So I can find guys priced right wherever I need to here. Uh, Let's see. There's a lot of good value plays left, so. Well, it is, I was going to say we could get Kemba in, but if we moved um, Brunson to shooting guard, but it is a GPP, so. That's fine. If if you can do that if you want. Okay. You You want to do that? Yeah, let's move Brunson to to, um, shooting guard. Okay. Kemba. And I'll take Kemba at point. At point. Brunson moves over to shooting. And that leaves me 6K for a small forward. There's a few guys I was looking at. I want nothing to do with Bogdan- Bogdanovich or Fournier. Um, I'll go Alec Burks, 5,600. Okay. That leaves us 400 in the tank. No, nothing wrong with that. And it gives us, for now, we'll see how it goes uh, based on news. But it's James Harden, Kemba Walker, Gary Payton the second, Jalen Brunson, Cam Reddish, Alec Burks, Robert Williams, John Collins, and Mitchell Robinson. 
there you go, man. That's all mm-hmm. the money. And that's a very contrarian group of GPT yeah. plays. I think, you know, we, we have just news on reddish is questionable, but of course with COVID, you got to follow all the news on everything else. So mm-hmm. it'll give us some options going into tomorrow. Like I say, check uh, Twitter and follow us in discord. If you want to become a, a member of Coach Talk, it's dfscoachtalk.com. Go to our website. You can sign up for the 12 Days of Christmas special for 12 bucks. Uh, and don't forget our winner, Kenneth Phillips. Congratu- congratulations to you. Uh, that's Ken Jr. in our Discord. 50 PayPal bucks coming your way. All right, man, that is it. Anything else you want to add there, Josh? No, just, you know, want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas. Enjoy your time with your family and your friends. It's going to be a fun weekend of, of basketball and football all weekend. And, you know, just uh, make the most of it. Absolutely. And really appreciate, you know, our entire Coach Talk team. Could not do this without those guys, Crash and Tyler and uh, certainly Omaha Joe uh, and – who am I forgetting? Of course, my partner, Andrew Hansen, yeah. who's always getting everything done. And uh, let's see, who'd I forget? Right. John Wehausen. John, we- how can I forget John Wehausen? He's like money. He is the money man of Coach Talk, man. He mm-hmm. is fantastic. If you have a chance to check out his analytics, I mean, he's phenomenal and uh, really has taken a, a big part of what we're doing here at Coach Talk. So he's phenomenal as well. So uh, we're all going to enter. That's one thing we're doing as a group. We're all entering uh, into that big $25 Millie Maker on DraftKings. See which one on the team here uh, of our group can have the highest score, hopefully take down the whole darn thing. So mm-hmm. we'll see how that rolls. So yeah. we welcome you all into that. So really appreciate you listening to us on this Christmas Eve, or if you're checking it out on Christmas Day, Merry Christmas to all of you. Thank you for spending this time with us. And uh, we'll look forward. We'll be back again. I'll be back on Sunday for NBA, the whole uh, football group of Crash, Omaha Joe, and, of course, Andrew Hansen will be back Sunday for NFL. We've got so much going here. Join in. Hit these 1% lineups with us. We'd love to have you. So have a Merry Christmas and a safe one. Enjoy. God bless to everybody. And uh, we'll see you again tomorrow or Monday or Sunday, all three, uh, when we look to crush it in NBA DFS.